Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. I was the I was the non-local who put his hand up over there. When that a minute ago. <laughs> Obviously. Well, thank you very much. I just um, this is, I'm very excited about this. The, the show is amazing. I've never seen it like this. Is I tell you, there's there's a couple more stops on the way before the show is uh, wound up, and I can't imagine any venue is going to top this presentation. I mean, this this takes the cake. I got to you know. I have to thank the Australian Army or something for this. It's amazing. Oh, and everyone who's um, um, hoping to win a Nick Brazil t-shirt, I can uh, you know, rest assured, I am a living legend back in New Zealand. Of course, no one in Australia has the faintest idea who I am. So it kind of, uh, it sort of takes the sting out of the prize a wee bit. But I'm working on it, I promise. And in a couple of years, we're glad you bought that t-shirt. I'll be all over the place. Especially thanks to the show, I must say. When I, I'm not even, I can't even remember how it began. Um, Dean and Peter contacted me because they knew of my work with the Phantom and they um, I became a sort of honorary Kiwi. There is another Kiwi involved, but, I, but he doesn't live in Auckland. And uh, I came on board as the, as, the, as the sort of the one Kiwi, the, the, honor, the Kiwi from New Zealand who's uh, touring in the show. And it has been amazing, meeting Peter, meeting Dia, meeting everyone involved with this, and every show that I think I've been to, it's, it's, hope, it's opened up a very interesting, a, a sort of a late career wrinkle that I never saw coming, I can tell you. you know, this is my intro into the Australian art record. I'm very excited to be here, Brian. Uh, and I've learned I've learned more about copyright than I ever needed to know, I can tell you that, I can tell you that for nothing. That's been a learning curve. Hey, listen everybody, hey, thank you for coming. It's a, it's a great crowd, great venue, it's gonna be a great night. Thank you all very much. Um, uh, look, I just, first of all, I, I wanna thank Peter Kingston and Dietmar for asking me to come here to open this extraordinary exhibition. I mean, I was in, the fandom is near and dear to my heart, and it's been a big part of my life, but to see this extraordinary labor of love that these guys have done and put this incredible exhibition together, uh, it, it's just wonderful. And, and it's an, it is an honor, everyone has, 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 uses the word honor a little sort of liberally, but it is an honor for me to, to be asked to come and open it. In fact, I've been cursing Peter because I've been trying now to figure out why, why has my life had so much of the phantom in it? I mean, because on the face of it, it's a totally absurd, absurd comic character. Uh, a guy who has really no superhuman powers, who wears a tight suit, he has some kind of Joseph Conrad style uh, up the river relationship with natives in Africa somewhere. And it, it, it is completely absurd. And I think the only thing I could figure out today was at the time, in the 60s, 70s, and 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s, when comics were big, that we were also listening to The Good Show and Monty Python had come up, and we're, we had this wonderful sense of absurd. And I think that's part of what we sort of enjoyed about the Phantom, the total absurdity of it, and the, the humour, and the, um, and the, this notion that this was something that belonged to us. I mean, at that time, comics, were, it was a golden era of comics. I mean, there were British war comics, there was Marvel, there was Disney, there was all manner of different comics, but for some reason, this character has stayed with us, mainly in Australia, because uh, I think, as you know, it's not overly popular elsewhere in the world, certainly not in America. Yeah. Um, but to, to us as Australians, it's sort of maintained this <laughs> wonderful sort of uh, presence. Um, just years ago, I had nothing to do. I was smoking pot and kind of feeling completely useless. I'd, I'd actually lived in Bulgoga for quite a while. I'd gone back to, a, <laughs> to the grand tradition of doing nothing in Bulgoga. Um, and I'd gone back to Sydney and I had to figure out something. And like, as I always do, like, I know, I, if I did t-shirts with a phantom on them, everyone would want one of those, surely. I mean, that's obvious. So I rode my bicycle to an office in, um, in Edgecliff, 
Then I'm still, I was, we were just trying to work out who what exactly was that I spoke to. But I got permission and I decided to put an ad in the comic. And this for me was wonderful because all these years of reading the fan of the, com the ad on the back, which was either how to play the ukulele or every now and then they sold phantom paraphernalia. There, were, there was the card with the personally signed by the phantom, greeting best wishes the phantom. There was, there was the, the wonderful one size fits all rings that you could get with the skull on them and you could option them up for the ruby eyes with the, the special, some, some dive that they put in there to indicate they were rubies. So, so I was going to get my ad on the back of the, of the comic and I made, I made up this script and it was the phantom where he would go to the well to, when he wanted to give orders to the jungle patrol, he would go to a well, crawl down the well and put a message in a safe where Colonel Weeks would come along and get the message and do whatever the phantom says he had to do. And I, the message that he got in my ad was, everyone should buy phantom t-shirts. <laughs> so, I, mean, I hadn't thought it through very well because all of a sudden all these letters started arriving with checks made out to phantom t-shirts. And I had to go to the bank and beg them to give me a bank account with phantom t-shirts so I could have some checks. But anyway, in my, this was a it's out of my business career, and I really thank the fandom for it. The, later on, when Lee Falk, the creator of the um, fandom, was coming to Sydney, and through publications invited me to go and meet Lee Falk, and I was so excited, because I was, there was all these questions about who was Wilson McCoy, who was Ray Moore. There was no Google then, you couldn't find out anything about these people. Uh, and I thought, I'm going to meet Lee Falk, I'm going to ask him all about these people. In my fevered brain, I figured out that, um, I figured out that Wilson McCoy must have been an alcoholic, failed, fine artist who had somehow been forced to do comics and put all his angst into these beautifully framed kind of comic strips. Because in the end, his art is still my favourite, as is most of the guys here. Um, so we went along to meet Lee Falk, who by this time was probably in his 80s. He, after the comics, he'd been a Broadway producer. And I actually was never been so disappointed in all my life. He, he was actually quite bemused by all this kind of enthusiasm. And the, the only reason he was there was the people who made Crocodile Dundee had decided to make a phantom movie. So he'd come, he could smell money, I think, <laughs> to see what was going on. And I said, so uh, can you tell me about Wilson McCoy and Ray Moore? And he went, no, I don't know. I mean, look, you know, I like Cy Barry, that's it. You know, I don't, I don't really don't know about those guys. And I just was just so what? And I just was so dejected. I had to shuffle off. And, um, but so, you know, there, there was the line, you should never meet your heroes because you, you probably end up being disappointed. The, the end of that story is that the people from the movie came to ask me what I thought about what a fan of movie should be. And I was obsessed with the, 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 the lesbian sky pirates who, I, I'm not sure if they were lesbian, but they certainly were small girls and they were uncomfortable around me. But they, and that raided, that sort of hijacked flying boats and hid in an island. And it was just after um, Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. I said, you can't do that, but of course they didn't. So my brilliant idea was, Ignored. But so I, I've rolled along, and the fandom is still just something wonderful. And, and knowing Peter, and I've met Dick more recently, and then of course Dick Frizzell over here is just fantastic. They they've taken all the beauty of the comics and turned it into wonderful fine art with humour, with with style, and and a huge respect for these things that we once had. So anyway, it's. Wonderful to open this exhibition. Respect for Gough Whitman, who apparently his ghost is here somewhere. Well done, comrade. You must have enjoyed it during the war. And um, and thanks to the the, the art gallery, the Monk Art Gallery. It's a it's a wonderful institution. And of course, I've been it's some I've been had it explained to me the history of it and how it's turned around and how it is a great uh, a great place for all Australian and comic art. Uh, the, 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 the
collection that exists. So thank you so much. Thank you for all coming. It's wonderful to be here. And um, good luck with the exhibition. Thank you.